I am interviewing Raymond Edward Bennett, and Raymond is spelled R-A-Y-M-O-N-D, and Bennett is F-E-N-E-T, and he is usually known as Ray, and we're at his home in the village of Withy. The date is November 19th, 2009, and I am Louise Rasmussen Oshevsky. We'll be talking about his life and his interesting occupations and his, uh, like, working on the railroad and his army life. Ray, would you tell us when and where you were born and about uh, your early life and your parents? Where were you born? Born in 1929 in Homan, town of Hexham. And where were your... See, your birth date was May 18th, 1929, yeah. right? Okay. And uh, tell me a little about your parents. Oh, they had a hard life to begin with. They had 40 acres. And they was a, during the Depression and didn't have nothing to, most of the time. What was your dad's name? Elmer. Francis Elmer. And your mother? Winifred Helms. Helms was her maiden name. Maiden name. And uh, they lived between, let's see, your dad was 1904 to 1981? Yes. And your mother was uh, 1908 to 1981? Yes. Now, what did they do as an occupation? Farm most of the time. Okay. It, the, when they farmed, the, I'm assuming that they had to pay taxes at some time. What kind of taxes did they pay? What were real estate taxes, say, on... They have 40 acres? 40 acres, and the taxes were $17.21. And this was in the year um, 1935. 35. Times certainly have changed. Now, I think your dad also was a carpenter. Now, did he play uh, concertina? Well, he played accordion and violin and drums and played in a band several times at Walla Drawheim. So that's where you got your musical talent from. I suppose. <laughs> I think he used to play at house parties in the neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. years ago we played house parties. They would move the furniture aside and... Uh, yeah. And I don't but know if some of those rooms were so small. I'm not sure how they... They're just two couples at a time danced or, or what it was. Place with our rollers and clobbins and Petkies and... Oshevskis. Oshevskis. And, uh, and your mother... Did she do something besides being an excellent cook? No, well, done a lot of sewing. So most of my clothes years ago. And that's about it. Well, yeah, that took a lot of time. Uh, how about your siblings? What was your brother's name? Doing. And he was born, remember when? May 28, 1938? Yeah. Okay. So you both had May birthdays. The whole family did. Oh, your parents' yeah. birthdays were also in May? Yeah. Well, that's pretty <clears throat> unusual. When you were growing up, you attended grade school. Where did you attend grade school? Clark School. And how many students were in your class? Well, I graduated. There was only two of us. Then from there, you went to Withy High School. Yes. And what year did you graduate from there? 1947. Okay. Are there any students that you recall that rode your bus that were kind of memorable students that maybe were troublemakers and wound up being successful at the end? Toby Mackey. What, what do you remember about him? <laughs> well, he used to get on the bus the bus turned around in his yard and made a circle, and he used to get on the bus, and he wasn't fully dressed yet when he got on the bus. He finished dressing on the bus, and he was in more trouble in school. And then uh, later on, he was become a dentist in Chicago. Now he had a place in Lake Tahoe. So you can never tell from uh, when someone's young what they, in a small community like this, where they, how successful they may wind up being. Uh, what type of occupations did you have in your lifetime? I was a make, 
mechanic and maintenance man and worked on the Sioux Line Railroad. Worked for Reynolds Aluminum, making aluminum cans. What, what kind of cans, what, for instance, what did they make cans for? Pepsi Cola and Miller, uh, Miller Lite. Made beer, beer cans. Beer cans, too. yeah. Uh, how did you get the job on the railroad? I just went down, signed in, and filled my application out. The man said, I'll be back in about 10 minutes, and he came back and asked me if I was ready to go to work. <laughs> what, what kind of job did you do? Uh, did you go to work right then, or what did you do? Well, he told me if I wanted my job, I'd better be there Monday morning. This was Thursday, I think it was. I think you said you had your family in the car, so you couldn't yeah, start. Right my then. family was in the car. Yeah. What did you do on the railroad? A fireman. Um, a fireman on a diesel. How does that work? Well, you didn't have much to do. <laughs> Checked it all once in a while, and that was about it. Where did the train go between what cities? I only worked in uh, Lady Smith and Superior in the yards, switching cars. Hmm. Uh, on the railroad, did you ever get a chance to be up in the cab and drive the train or anything like that? Yes, I did. Quite an experience. Well, why do you say that? <laughs> well, we had back some cars off from Ladysmith Paper Mill and pushed them up the track. And uh, I was driving the engine, and I couldn't understand what the in uh, uh, conductor wanted. So I figured he wanted me to back up. He dropped a couple of cars off. And I, th I thought he wanted me to back up. I was backing up, and then he started motioning, and I didn't know what he wanted. So I started going up towards the other cars, and the block come out from where the cars were, and the, the cars was coming towards me, and I was going towards them. <laughs> and we had a little crash. <laughs> sounds exciting. <laughs> Now, you worked at the healthcare, Clark County Health Care Center for a number of years. What did you do there? I uh, maintenance supervisor for about 15 years. Hmm. When did you retire from there? 1989. Hmm. What other uh, jobs did you have? Well, I worked for Foster Will, worked for Ford uh, Implement and Thorpe. Worked for a lot of places when I uh, lived in Minnesota. I worked for quite a few places because they, they went on strike in uh, aluminum plants, so I had to find several jobs to keep going. Then I moved back to Whitney. Got a job at the health care center. Now, was this uh, after you were in the service? That you had all these jobs, or before yeah, you were in the service? Afterwards. After. Okay. When you were in the service, um, what are, what branch did you serve in, and where did you serve? I was in 25th Division in uh, Korea. In what years? 51 to 53. And do you remember anything about the, let's say, the food that you ate or your sleeping conditions there? Well, we used to have to go down the side of the mountain to get our dinner. Otherwise, we would cave rations, and uh, we lived in a bunker, and we just had a canvas over the doorway for to keep warm, and had uh, five-gallon pail of charcoal to keep warm with, and it got just as cool as it does here in Wisconsin. And my bunk was two poles going across the communication wire wrapped, wrapped back and forth. On two poles. That sounds comfortable. <laughs> uh, you had mentioned that when you would usually go down the side of the mountain, that's when the most action was now going. The North Koreans seemed to know when we was going down for dinner, and they start shooting mortar rounds in. One time we went for dinner and we came back, and there was a dud laying in a guy's bunk to come right through the roof and never went off, but laying in his bunk. So you probably have some memories of um, Pearl Harbor 
time, when you were a little younger for Pearl Harbor or VJ Day, do you have any particular memories about those two incidents, even that you were told or not, Pearl Harbor? Not really, no. Sometimes people are in a certain place that they remember, remember some of those. Okay, as you were growing up, besides working on the farm, you must have had some fun. What kind of recreation did you, what things did you do, parties or dances? No, oh, I went to dances and I went hunting and fishing and skiing and playing base softball. I played softball several places. On a team? Yeah, yes. A pitcher most of the time. Did you ever get a little professional in your skiing? Not really, no. I ski jumped off the ski hill in Perkinstown. I entered quite a few skiing contests there. What's the biggest buck you ever got? Oh, it was a nine-point buck with an eight-inch spread. And how about... I had it mounted because... Guys told me I'd never get another one like it. How about fishing? Oh, I caught quite a few fish in my life. What's the biggest uh, one you ever caught? Oh, I, I caught a nice 18 inch bass one time. Um, they used to show movies as a entertainment around here. What Do you remember where they were and what was the, uh, some of the actors that were in those movies? Where did they show them? They showed the, in Withy on the end of the feed mill, they put up a canvas there, and there was Joy Rogers, Tom Mixon, Three Stooges, and people like that. Then there was another one at Shady Nook. Uh, during the week, they used to have free movies up there. It was about the same kind of movies. Now, you, I had to ask about some of your hobbies, and uh, one of the hobbies that you have is being, a, actually it's not just carpenter, it's cabinet maker. And I noticed in your house here you have uh, beautiful furniture that you have, you have made. Uh, another thing that, uh, with your musical talent, you, right now you play at a number of different activities. What are some of those that you play the drums at? Well, I'll play <clears throat> nursing homes and play uh, a lot of Sundays for Holy Rosy Polka Choir and, and band, a lot of places. Been to Chicago about three times. With the Polka Mass? Yes. The polka Band? Yeah. Um, when you were younger and the radio first came out, do you remember... Um, Listening to the radio and how is how you got the energy or the, there wasn't electricity right right away, but how did you listen to the radio? Well, we had a battery radio. I had to charge the batteries up, and that's the only way I had way to get the radio going. Did you ever have any pets that you remember kind of stand out in your mind, like a dog? I had a dog one time. Everybody shot at him and chased him out, and he went to my grandmother's place, and he was really scared of me, and I finally got to give him some food to eat and took him home, and he followed me wherever I went. You realized you weren't going to hurt him. Um, the, what was your first car that you had that usually stands out in people's minds? Chevy, 40, 1947. And do you remember what color it was? Blue. Was it a two-seater, four-seater? Four. Four-seater. Four How about the first time you had a train ride? Well, I think it was when I was in, when I was in Korea. Your train ride, I'm talking about. Where, where was your first train ride? I guess that's when I was in Korea. When you were in Korea? Yes. We rode for a day and a half or something on a train. 
There was no uh, place to sleep or nothing. The guys would sleep on the floor and on the, be on the benches. And it wasn't comfy like it is nowadays. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the troop train. How about your first airplane ride? Well, that's probably when I went to Korea. I flew far out of the way. Do you remember when electricity came in around here? 1930s? Somewhere in there. Do you remember how, what, probably the end of the 30s or early 40s, someplace in there? Do you remember um, when it came in and what your reaction was to not using a kerosene lamp? Uh, quite a bit of change. You have a lot of light. And you know, they were a lot brighter than a kerosene lantern. <laughs> How about uh, telephone? Do you remember when your family got a telephone? What your reaction was to it? Oh, well, we probably got one in 1950 or something like that. That was something different. Party line? Yes. <laughs> I always had to go to neighbors before I used the phone. Now, usually um, your mother or dad had remedies for any type of illness that you might have, for instance, a, a cold. What type of remedies did, home remedies, did your parents have? Most of the time it was Watkins liniment or Vicks. That's about it. Was that on a flannel cloth or just rubbed on? Just rubbed on. How about uh, a sauna? Was that something that you did? Yeah. I, I, I got one built in the basement in the house now, but I've been to a lot of saunas when I was a kid to different places. Did you have a neighbor that had one? Yes. What was his name? Frank Stone. What? Describe what a sauna is. Well, you go in and get it good and hot and put the uh, steam on you, make it steam, then you use a uh, pine bowl to pound yourself and get drive the heat in, then you'd wash up and go out in the middle of the room and dress up. And a lot of times the older people used to go out and roll around the snow before, when they got out of there. This, this is a Finnish yes. bath, actually what it is. Yes. It? Sometimes uh, I've heard that this, when you're sick, that you do this and it kind of, you sweat and you do a lot of sweating in there. Yeah, oh, yeah. And it sweat runs right off you. Helps you to get better. Um, your spouse, uh, you, do you mind if we talk about your first spouse, who you were married to? Was the, the name? Lorraine Malecki. Okay. And uh, with her, you had two children? Yes. Okay, and their names are? Roger and Gloria. Okay. <clears throat> what is Gloria's last name? No. Gloria Sabodnik. And she worked as a secretary, did yes. you tell me? Okay. And um, then, okay, then you married um, Ruth, and what was Ruth's last name? Hodemacki. And she had a, a daughter? Yes. And her name is? Shirley Alexander. Shirley Alexander. And what kind of occupation did Shirley have? Well, she worked for four months there as a secretary for many years, and she does a lot of different kinds of sewing, making blankets and all different things like that. Okay. <clears throat> now, how did you meet Ruth? At the Clark County Health Care Center. And what, what were you both doing there? <laughs> well, she was secretary and I was maintenance supervisor. And how long have you been married? 34 years. Um, so you were married in 1974, I think you told me? Did 34? 35. <laughs> okay, now what kind of organizations have you belonged to? Just American Legion in Lublin. And you've been there, you've belonged with them for a while. Um, the church you belong to? 
United Church of Christ in Owen. And what kind of awards have you received um, during your lifetime? Oh, the, they gave me a watch when I retired from the health care center. And uh, oh, when I had 15 years and I got an award for being there that long. Now, I think that I could almost call your Holy Rosary Band an organization or something, or an award, or I, I guess organization you belong to also. You played with them for a long time. Now, to what do you owe your longevity? Staying active. Staying active. Okay, and you walk every day? Yes. So that's probably a, a good example of what, what helps you stay active. You're very physically fit, too. What advice could you give to young people today? Get a good job with a pension. <laughs> that sounds good. Ray, I want to thank you very much for particip participating in our oral history. And you are a valuable part of our local community here. And we thank you very much for sharing your past with us. Thank you. We uh, made uh, aluminum cans. We used the uh, rollers aluminum, and then I went to a press to make a little cup out of there, and then went to another press to make the can. Then on the, another press to trim the top off square, and then another press to roll the edges over and the cans were sprayed with lacquer inside, and they went through them so fast that you couldn't hardly see them. It was just a little sit like that, and the whole can was painted inside. It was just a blur when they went through, you couldn't see hardly. They really went fast. How many cans a day do you think they made? Million and a half. Million and a half? 45 million a month. Holy cow. That's a lot of cans. A lot of beer. Yeah. yeah. They make for Coca-Cola, too. Oh. And that was for Miller, did you say, or Hams, or who did, or for number Miller, of? Miller. Miller. Mm -hmm. That was quite an interesting operation. <laughs>